Hello and good afternoon. My name's Larry Champong and you're listening to The Mic Drop, a special podcast project created in collaboration with Many Hands, One Heart and Heart of Glass in St. Helens. Uh, today, joining me, uh, where we'll be discussing a recent uh, film released in cinemas titled Queen and Slim, directed by Melina uh, Matsukas, um, is Adrian. Hello. Emily. Hi. And Sam. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that voice. Um, so yeah, uh, just to give a, a breakdown of the uh, of, of the film for those of you who haven't seen, and also a warning for those of you who uh, are looking to see the film, you probably don't want to listen to this now. You might want to listen to it afterwards. But the uh, the plot uh, focuses around uh, two characters um, whose names actually you don't really find out until later. Uh, but Queen and Slim, who uh, have a have a date uh, following a Tinder match, um, which kind of goes tragically wrong uh, following uh, an altercation with a police officer. Um, I guess I wanted to start off the the conversation by asking you all individually what your thoughts were of of, of the film that you experienced. For me. Um, sitting in to watch the film with yourselves was was my second time in fact i i watched a, a special advanced uh, screening in london so uh, coming to watch it again in in liverpool um it gave me a bit more kind of time to digest some of the things that happen in the film because there's quite a lot that, that's going on uh, adrian would you perhaps like to begin with with how you or what you thought of the film oh yes thank you um it was quite moving uh, the film because uh, um I also I, I'm involved in communication and stuff like that. So I think the most remarkable thing for me it was uh, how they put the media stops. You know when they put the news and all the sensational lips that were around uh, the news and everything and how they lied to people saying stuff. So I, I was quite impact on that sense because uh, you know. There's like two versions of the story. The version that, in that case, that people uh, could relate and they know the truth, and the other version that people that believe from when they see on television. Mm -hmm. So I think across the whole story and how they develop the 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 story. I mean mm -hmm. the real story and also the story show on the on the mm -hmm. on the television. It was quite interesting how they can manipulate people. Mm. But also at the same time, uh, there's people who not get uh, on that kind of play, mm -hmm. and they took the real story as something as empowerment. Because uh, I told you in the past, uh, I think on the same day, mm -hmm. uh, the movie's really uh, the, it's really moving in the sense is took uh, the races mm -hmm. and stuffs like it was really hard when when I saw the the idea scene when they were. Uh, with the policeman mm. and I was really angry mm -hmm. in that moment and you know you you're like oh my god this is awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like uh you feel that uh, in that moment and, and I know that's true that's mm -hmm. something that's still happening in 2020 yes. and yeah how, how they manage uh, and, and you see it was not their fault mm. but at the same time they have no choice to run because mm -hmm. no one will believe them no. and and yeah I, I mean that that point of they don't have any other options they cannot say their truth it's, it's really 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 something important so yeah yeah so Emily yeah. Uh, thank you yeah I mean um, an incredible film like and I think that I've just been thinking about it since we watched it um, and I think that what was um, I don't know for me it was one of those films that um, because you you just like love the characters you really really get into the story and so um yeah they just really really take you with them on on these on this journey which is um yeah absolutely i agree adrian like it just like fills you with i don't know you just the rage that you feel in those moments of just watching this unfold and just seeing i don't know like one of the things that you get so angry about is this is this feeling that um like as soon as you see that situation they're going they're about to go through it feels like inevitable or something like we've seen this so many times before 
you know what's going to happen and it's just uh yeah and yeah you just want to kind of like scream at the at the, at the screen um but then alongside this is just this like really gorgeous um unfolding of like a love story and and um getting to getting to you're getting to know the characters as they get to know each other um in a really um like genuine way you know it's not like some like sappy sappy like love story it's like um, it's the the it's Queen and Slim kind of being um, in the situation together and being vulnerable together and um, getting to know each other and, and fall in love and and, um, and and so yeah you just you 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 really really care about them and, and their journey and uh, and yeah so I think there was probably plenty of moments where I was just you know either leaning towards the screen screen ready just, just like ah, or Actually, I think I feel like internally yeah, maybe yeah. I was just making loads of sounds <laughs> like maybe yeah. I was just like ah and then was like oh oh no oh ah, ah. So I think that was probably what was going on in me but uh, yeah an incredible piece of filmmaking and I think because we've been um this this week kind of working a lot around sound um the the sound was so it was so important in that film and really mm-hmm. understanding that yeah. you know this amazing soundtrack mm. um and then, like this, uh, I think what I've been thinking about and why it's kind of stayed with me is just like the sounds of violence, like the gunshot at the uh, um, at the end. Sorry, spoilers. Um, I don't know. Just just feels sounds massive. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Emily. I do agree. Uh, Sam, yeah. Yeah, you? Emily. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't finish the whole movie. I do enjoy the. I think the uh, character of the movie is very good. And most of the time, it wasn't their fault. You see, they just do it accidentally. They had killed a policeman, so they tried to escape. And most of the time, they escape. They have trouble and try to get help and all that. Yeah, end of the day, it's a very lovely story. And it's very good. A good character movie. I do enjoy it. I think I'll be back to watch again to finish the whole movie hmm. again. Cool. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, it is quite unfortunate because it was literally like a few minutes off from you leaving yes. that the yeah. film had concluded. But I I I, I agree. I think it's it, it deserves a rewatch. I think um, it's quite a unique film in um, in the way that it opens up a story of 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 love of essentially two people who don't really know each other and and you're kind of on a road trip. It's a road trip film in a way, you know, and. Um, I think that exploration of of aspects of of uh, of Black America are shown so beautifully. You know, from the travelling through from uh, Ohio, where our characters meet, through to the likes of uh, you know New Orleans and so on. Um, yeah, and and the the soundtrack I just found was was incredibly uh, vulnerable, uh, heavily layered. Uh, Devonte Hines. Um, who's known for uh, his work as you know light speed champion i think the band uh, the is it the testicles um w- was able to create i think um sketches of 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 feeling that really just kind of um melded with the other uh, the characters i think particularly the uh, the the transformation point where they needed to cut their hair so that they were less recognizable as how they previously were was uh, was really powerful for me. Um, one of the things that I'd noticed um, during, I guess, like the kind of like promotional period of of uh, you know the, the the film's release and and some kinds of like reviews and discussions around the film was uh, the way in which people uh, likened uh, the characters of Queen and Slim to. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde, who... Um, uh, yeah, I thought... Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was, honestly... I wanted, to t- I wanted to talk a little bit about that, because... Yeah, honestly, I, I because was thinking of Bonnie and Clyde yeah. in the whole movie, <laughs> but I didn't want to make that... that, that yeah, that. yeah. Well the, thing, well, the thing for me is, is that, like, I, 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 cannot, I understood why people made that kind of uh, connection or even comparison, but, but the issue for me was that, you know, Bonnie and Clyde, they are actual criminals. You know, yeah. they, they, you know they, 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 that point in their life was based on hurting people, taking from people and killing people. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas this story between Queen and Slim, they're, they're placed within a very particular uh, predicament 
uh, a big issue that affects people, not simply just in the likes of yeah. you know the United States, even in the UK. I can even say as somebody who's been stopped and searched you know numerous times by police and unlawfully, I've got you know nothing to to hide. But at the same time, I've been approached based on my race. You know these these people. Um, have, have had uh, violence placed upon them. And again, based on the, the, the history of, 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 of slavery and so on. But yeah, I just found that a bit unsettling, like thinking about why are they being likened to a criminal couple that, that based their, their careers on, on killing and hurting yeah. and maiming people? I think something that, well, I'm a, a little bit obsessed with Bonnie and Clyde, honestly. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, but yeah... Uh, I was thinking about that the whole movie, like I said, because it's like that love story uh, in, a, in a getaway car from the justice, you know, and it's like that feeling of, of, of that adrenaline that they should feel, or you, you feel, I mean, mm -hmm. like running away from the justice. It's like, I think that's when they do that comparison between Bonnie and Clyde, but like you said, when they cry, they were actual criminals. I mean, they rob banks, they do so many stuff. And actually, the when the end of the story of Bonnie and Kais is also the same. They are killed. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, I, I mean, but one thing I could say mm -hmm. is, and, and I'm thinking about this, is like the fact, and I'm I'm putting this again in the in the, in the power of, of the media. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde, they were white. Yes. So they that's were. why they see everyone was romantic and it's like, oh, I want to be Bonnie and Clyde. But you see a black couple and it's like the media put they as criminals. Mm -hmm. I mean, like dangerous people. And I I, I was really, really with anger at the end when they, when they put on the movies, uh, the sucks were killed because they were dangerous and mm -hmm. armed and they... They were they were even barefoot, I think so. And mm. The girl, I think, was barefoot because they. But I mean, it's like oh gosh, how how they can 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 switch the story and mm. put a bad character just for the race? Because honestly, they done that maybe because it sells more. Mm -hmm. It sells more to put a, a, a someone else from a different background uh, as dangerous as a criminal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's, it's honestly a. Uh, Something that, that in that moment I was really, really, really feel full, fulfilled of anger. Absolutely. But, but I yeah. mean, you know, it, it, for me, it kind of brought to mind the way in which um, in black people, in which black people, when, uh, when arrested or detained or held by officers, you know, when you have things like mugshots or images of them, that, you know, you know, were portrayed as, as like baddies, evil and whatnot. Um, even when seeing uh, actual footage of uh, Eric Garner, who was killed mm. in 2014 by New York Police Department officers, you know, you see it directly there. And then post that point of that, that imagery being shown, you know, all these kinds of stories and images of this guy who, you know, uh, did all kinds of foul things, you know, pop up and... and, and and, and of course, it's, it's manufactured, manufactured in a direction to create uh, a response to mm. uh, the fear of the, uh, of, of the black figure, the black subject, this kind of almost boogeyman type character. Mm. And so I, I really appreciated how the film, um, again, kind of centered itself within uh, conversations around humanity and even celebrating um, uh, black culture. Of course, it's from a, uh, uh, an American perspective, but I felt that there was just so much uh, waiting there to kind of like be opened yes. up, and it was really about um, the way in which people look after one another. In this case, the way in which black people look after one another, because of course they're traveling from state to state, and there are yes. people who know what have happened, and and they're looking out for them because they know and they've seen this kind of thing happen again and again and again, and they know that. You know, the, the, the law enforcement are not going to, you know, look after them. I yeah. think there's something about, like, the production of, like, the images that are used, though, as well. Like, um, I don't know, maybe related to the kind of Bonnie and Clyde, like, uh, iconography or something <laughs> like that. Because yes. <laughs> there's these, like, also these two sets of images, right? The images that are taken from the, I think it's taken from, like, the dash cam of the police, uh, you know, that appears in all of the newspapers, that these, these two people are criminals and you need to be on the lookout because they're super dangerous. And then there's this really... Um, 
there's a photograph that is taken by a young boy um, mm-hmm. when they're um, in a in mm-hmm. a garage, and it's a picture of them taken like on the hood of a car, and um, and it's just this this uh, you can also see the relationship between them in that photograph, and that becomes then because um, throughout the film as well, there's lots of talk about um, the idea of uh, legacy and our legacies through through one another as well, how our relationships become legacies of. Um, ourselves and what we and what we believe in, and that photograph kind of then throughout the movie goes on to be um, a part of that legacy. So this also this taking over of um, of 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 that image of 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 Queen and Slim as as people and as and and at that point as like two people that have been on like this this journey together is is really interesting. But maybe also links to some of that stuff that you're talking yeah. about in terms of like the like this glamour of Bonnie and Clyde that you mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, something I, I want to recall is uh, maybe I'm not black and I haven't in my life experience uh, with racism. Uh, I mean, I've been uh, quite fortunate in that sense. Like, coming from a Latin American background is like, and this could sound rude for some people, but my skin color is not black enough to be racist with me. So, uh, But what I do experiment is like, the abuse of the power from uh, someone else who should be the justice. And when I was watching this scene with the uh, the white cop uh, treating them, it just remind me uh, the time the Home Office tried to deport me. Mm-hmm. And they played that bad cop uh, game. Like, you know, uh, I'm the justice here. You have nothing, anything else to do. and. I mean, I came, I'm, I'm actually um, from a minority ethnic uh, and, you know, it's so hard to, to be in the, in the situation when someone else uh, say they represent the justice, say they represent all the good things mm-hmm. or in, in the country you are mm. trying to pass over your rights, pass over your humanity and I mean, I've been in that situation uh, when when the, when the Home Office they tried to deport me, mm-hmm. and it was really, really, really touching that moment because I feel relate. Mm. You feel like, what should I do? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like you are I, I, I actually. I can feel I was both characters in that moment. Mm-hmm. Part of me uh, was slim. Uh, I want to be nice and quiet because. My life could be dependent on this, but I'm also I want to be queen. Like mm. this is not right. I, I I know my rights, and you know I I will stand for my right. So, yeah, it's it's kind of uh, interesting that is scene, and I think mm. it's it's one of the most remarkable on the on the on the movie. Uh, but yeah, coming from that background, when mm. when someone else tried to pass over you, it's like a really really, and I, I mean it's like. When they shoot the police, the, mm. the policemen, you are like in a situation. I should be happy, or I should. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or why, why should I feel right now? Because yeah, I yeah. mean, the actor that that plays that character, he's a really good actor, oh, yeah, and you hate really him nice. actually. Yeah. You hate him, and you're like, oh, oh you mean the police officer? Yeah, sorry, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a really good actor, and yeah. you hate him on the oh, moment, yeah. and you Absolutely. feel like, oh my god, he yeah. he he got what he deserves. <laughs> yeah, I well, you know. To, for me to recap the, the first time that I watched it and it was a packed audience in this, um, you know, the advanced screening, like people stood up and clapped. Mm-hmm. And I was there clapping as well because, um, again, joining with, 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 with you and, and, and if I can perhaps even empathise, I've been falsely arrested before. I've had my clothes taken for forensics um, for a crime that I didn't commit, of course. And uh, and I even remember it at the time, and I was I was only I was sixteen years old. Oh, um, I remember my mother like coming to the uh, the, the police station, local police station, the next day, and um, you know, in, in in true traditional kind of like Ghanaian form, you know, let this be your last. You know, you're not going to be going out anymore. All of this stuff. She didn't want to hear anything. She didn't want to hear, you know, what had actually happened to me. What what she knew was that these officers of the law had detained me for doing something wrong, doing yeah. something bad, which I had not done at all. You know, so that, that, that stayed with me. It still stays to, with, with me today. And, and, and it makes its way in some respects through some of my work, some of the projects that I do. But most certainly watching that scene when they were held by the police officer, it just kind of, 
like my my body just kind of stiffened up, mm. and and that that point of uh, release when uh, uh, Daniel Kaluuya's uh, character Slim um, defended himself uh, and 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 Queen against the the police officer, I I was elated, I, and I'm I, I make no bones about that. Um, so uh, yeah, but I, yeah, I don't think it's a human reaction to uh, emphasize with with Queen and Slim in that moment because uh, we are humans and mm. I, I think like, like I say pr probably in the past sometimes people try to blame you for what you feel mm. in, in some moments but they don't know probably you've been in the same situation uh, or you've been uh, pushed in that, in that situation so you, you will release that you have sometimes insight. I'm not saying I'm going to kill a cop I'm not saying that yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, what I'm, I'm trying to say is like you could empathize with the release of someone made justice. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. And you see that later on the movie when you see the whole protest, mm -hmm. all the all the all the black people coming in front of the cops and saying, "You, wh why are you gonna do that? Shoot yeah. us or something like mm -hmm. that." So it, you see that on the movie. You see that uh, because that incident was inspiring to other people to mm -hmm. came out and say, "You know, enough of this." And as a gay man, I know that happens also with the LGBT community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where when was when we have the uh, the riots on New Yorks? I mean, mm -hmm. that riots they came because uh, the police came to a gay club and arrest some some transvestites or transgender people. So all, all that riots came from sometimes so, something that was unfair. In mm -hmm. that moment, I, I just read about the story and mm -hmm. the, the people just came and start to scream to the police and shut out mm -hmm. and it was like something that 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 probably came from some i, I put something like similar because it happens from one incident with the police the police try a uh, thinking they are better mm -hmm. the police thinking they are the justice against yeah. a minority group that's called lgbt or black people or, or anyone else and these people they say you know what this is enough. Mm -hmm. We're gonna stand up and we're gonna fight for our, our rights. So yeah, it was quite quite uh, quite inspiring that 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 thing when all the people they say it's enough. Mm. I mean, it's enough. Yeah. Um, Sam, Emily, I was wondering if there's anything that you want uh, to I add do to that. really enjoy the movie. To be honest with you, a part of it on my side I think is quite racist, and the English police band is trying to arrest them just for a small thing and try to shoot the, the girl just for a small thing. And then finally they try to escape and then I finally that one of the black policemen just let them go when they try to escape. And anyway, they're still criminal but they still enjoy their life. They go to the horse farm and have a ride on the horse for the mm -hmm. fun. And they still go to the nightclub and all that. They know they're on criminal then also they also on the TV news and what we know them. That's why they got a haircut and try to make themselves different with a long hair to a short hair. <laughs> I do enjoy it. I think obviously the sound system, I do agree, is a very good sound system. And honestly, I like to thank How a Glass to bring me to watch the movie in Orient Cinema. And that's my first time in four years oh, in Liverpool. Wow. <laughs> I didn't mention that, Emily. <laughs> I haven't got a chance to go and watch a movie there because I knew that cost a lot of money. So mm -hmm. at that time, we only got five pounds a day. So I didn't, I really don't have thanks Heart of Glass for bringing me to watch that movie. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and hanging out with me at the movies. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Very I, nice I, really, uh, movie I, I love going to the movies personally. Like it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, yes. I've got to yeah. say like outside of my my artistic career. I'm a bit of a boring guy. I've got two kids whom, you know, I do a lot of things with. We do karate and so on. But otherwise, um, I, I do enjoy going to the cinema and sharing experiences, you know, and you're sitting down, yeah. you're taking in a, a conversation or, or, or a moment that someone decides to capture and the way in which, you know, everybody has nuanced or different approaches to what it is that they've seen, you know, much like this, this context in which we're sitting. I think is is really special uh, when you're able to share that. Um, 
I wanted to, I wanted to, talk, I'm really sorry about this, Sam, because you didn't see the last bit, but we are, <laughs> I'm going to talk a bit it's about it. Yeah, and I still, watch yeah, I still yeah. think you've got to watch it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, spoiler alert. Um, I, I wanted to talk about, you know, some of those final moments within the film and uh, particularly where uh, Queen and Slim, they're very close to getting um, uh, an airplane, uh, I think out of Florida, right? And they're just approaching it and you see a wide angle shot uh, filming them face on as if they're coming toward the camera and then just behind them you can see a police, of a, a police um, a car just shoot from the other uh, right side of the other uh, wide, wide angle shot. And, and again, just to kind of recap um, that, that the feeling in the audience of the other uh, special uh, advanced screen that I went to, people were just like, oh, damn shit, you know. Um, and, and how I personally felt about that was it was, there were two things that were at play within me. The first thing was that seeing what happened within like, let's say like the first 15 or 20 minutes of the film, um, I thought from like a, a reality kind of based perspective as a young black man, this isn't going to end well for them. But then going through the film and going through the, the, this journey of, of, of beauty, of, of trauma, of, of, of uh, memory and so on, I kind of, I, I was in this kind of trance of hope that they would actually get away because cause it's a film. You know, as much as it's talking about, uh, you know, reality, it's still a film. And, and, and for that, I hoped that they would get away and they didn't and they got... Yes. murdered and and if anything that's probably my, one of my bugbears with the film um other other than that i thought it was quite incredible but the thing that i found annoying was that you know even even within uh a, a non-fiction setting of cinema black people or people of color still can't find any justice or they can't make it away you know they weren't going to try and hurt someone. They were trying to get away because they are trying to live and yet they couldn't. And, and, and I felt, you know, in a, in a critical kind of like perspective, like this is just, oh, well, that's shit, isn't it? So yeah, I, I, I want to open it up and see what, what you all felt about that. Yeah, I think across the movie, uh, you love the characters, you feel empathize and so many stops and you have, uh, you expect them to at least find a, a way to be happy, and yeah. When I like like you when when I saw the the, the, the that bit, I was like, ah oh, yes, there's an airplane. Mm. They're gonna make it. Mm. I was like for one second, I just read, but then I saw the the, the police <laughs> coming. I was like, yeah. oh gosh, mm -hmm. and it's like uh, part of me uh, knew from the beginning. Uh, it, nothing good starts in a getaway car so <laughs> and yeah part of me knew that could happen at the end but having that tiny light of hope that yeah. they, they could make it yeah. and they just like oh they were so close mm -hmm. yes. yeah yeah, yeah but um, like you said it's like that that taste that you have like there's no justice and it's like mm -hmm. That says like, I mean, they cannot have justice by the justice with the state. Mm -hmm. They at least should have justice in other way. Yeah. And I feel relate that my personal story because I could never ask for justice for me in my country for all the stops that happened. And there's so many people in my country be killed for being gay. There's so many people be raped, be kidnapped, be tortured. That could happen to me, and. I could never ask in my country for justice. There's so many cases of people being tortured and murdered. And they're just like that. They never capture any criminal any, any criminal or something like that. So coming that way that for that 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 ethnic minorities, it's difficult to have justice. And mm. it's like it's like I told myself like if I can have justice here. I could fly to other places and get justice there. That that is my story of life. So 
I want them to be like me, like, if they cannot have justice there, they can run away to a place where they can find some happiness, but... Indeed. Sadly, they didn't make it. Yeah. Um, Sam. Oh, well, and of course, Sam. You, you still got to go and watch it, so... Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it there with you. But, um, Emily, what, what did uh, you think? Yeah, I mean, as you were describing that scene again, like, oh, yeah, heart flips, just just like horrible to watch because yeah that moment where the police cars kind of come around and you realize what's about to happen ugh, ugh. um but i think that it's yeah and you have that feeling like oh really like and it and i suppose the scene that kind of happens before that which is where they're um where they're about to get caught like there's a scene where it feels like okay this is about to happen but then um they're they're basically allowed to escape, and it, it's a feeling like oh maybe this is changing, maybe this maybe actually the ending of this is going to be different, and so when those police cars swing round, you're just like oh no, it's even here as you say even in cinema like this this isn't going to turn out the way that it should do, um, but I think that also that of that scene for me is also about like the um, the relentlessness of the violence of the state really like that um, that even though what what we what we know like between us as as people is right and what is wrong um and what the state says is right and wrong are two very different things but um but the state has um has power and is and and in this case in this in this film is just is just kind of like relentless like you're saying they've not done anything wrong and they're trying to they're trying to escape they're trying to get away they're trying to kind of they are um they are defending themselves and they are escaping <clears throat> they're not um they're not enacting violence upon other people. Like it's it, it's it's totally wrong. And so, um, for me, that scene as well, just kind of also setting up an understanding of of who these two individuals are in that moment, the moment in which they're about to die, by you know saying that they're armed and they're dangerous and they're criminals in in this moment where they're in the most vulnerable position. They're like they're the two people on an on a runway. Um, who have been traveling, um, have been running for their lives and um, are now surrounded by about 30 police officers with, with shotguns, basically, mm. and rifles. And a helicopter. And a helicopter, well, yeah. yeah. And you look at the scene and you're just like, uh, okay, the imbalance here of yeah. what's <laughs> happening is is ridiculous. But that's kind of when you... But it's, it's, it's a horrible scene, but at the same time, it's a really um, clear scene of the reality of the situation. Like, seeing that, seeing the two individuals, like, here, and seeing the, the surroundings of what's going on um, around them. Um, it's just a really... For me, it was just like a... It kind of took my breath away, this really clear depiction of the reality of the violence of the state and the... and. Um, and and I don't know. I think that then, yeah, I agree with I agree with you, Adrian. Just like feeling that that's quite um, for me it was quite a kind of depressing moment of seeing that and just being like, oh, it's it's so it's so huge. And so, how do you even start to kind of um, like how do you push against that, or how do you um, how how does this ever end? Because it feels like um, so massive. And so then, I suppose those those kind of few following scenes um towards the end um are really yeah what has kind of been set up throughout the movie as well this idea of our connections with each other like and how important they are and um and how and how a, how a story is then told afterwards as well like who who controls that story and and how is it how is it passed on mm. can you show something that you said um I find quite interesting that what you said about uh, the state oppression because I, I just reminded I'm not sure if you haven't seen the bodyguard from BBC. Oh no, I know that I haven't seen it yet. Then. Well, Ooh. there's in the first episode, there's one girl and she has like a a bomb suit, so she's gonna explode on the toilet. Mm -hmm. So this came the the the, the fella who was the protagonist, uh, the main character. He came to that girl and said. I could help you, but I will tell you there's people that there's officers outside, uh, and if you came out of the toilet, they're gonna shoot you because they don't care about you. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like the main character has mm -hmm. a little bit of empathize from the from the woman who was which was mostly was not British, mm -hmm. and kind of kind of like that remind me like that like the, the police officer they don't care about the humans there, mm -hmm. they don't care if they die or they live. Mm -hmm. I mean they just want to uh, destroy the um, the, mm -hmm. the the danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's quite of, of yeah. similar because in that design of the polygons, they are on a train, mm. and you could see so many so many guys with so many, mm -hmm. so many mm -hmm. guns and everything, and they are just like that. They are yeah. just waiting for 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 the order to shoot. But what this fella from the, the polygon, what he does is like he came inside and, and he hugged that girl. So in that bo in, in that way, the guys from outside they cannot shoot the girl mm -hmm. without shooting him. So mm -hmm. it, it's like. Uh, I kind of twisted that part, <laughs> but it, it's like the same, the same feeling. Like, like can I quick question? Because I, I think I know the answer to it. But the bodyguard is he white? Yes. Yeah. Really handsome. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. That's why I want you know because again, like these, you know, Queen and Slim, they are black. The yeah. Black people yeah. and and you know you even hear like tales of like black police officers being brutalized by you know, white police officers. I, I wonder, again, what, what might that situation be like if that officer was black even, for example, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think oh, yeah. you, you, you bring out, like, really good point, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. No, when I'm trying to, to point in comparison, yeah. it's like the way, the, like, like it's not fair, like, yes. an army of guys yeah, with guns indeed. rather than yeah. just one person who, I mean, that girl, she was armed with a bomb suit, mm -hmm. of course, but it's like the feeling of they don't care if that people lives. Yes. As far as they do their job. Indeed, yeah. And their job is, is to eradicate uh, uh, the, the target. Day. Yes. And, and when that target has a darker skin tone, yes. that price is, is higher. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Agree with that. Um, anyway, uh, I think we'll probably stop there. Uh, all right. Thank you all so much, Adrian, Emily, Sam, mm -hmm. for your time. Uh, it's another podcast from the, uh, the Mic Drop, and you're listening to Larry Champong. Thank you very much. Bye.